Greetings everyone. It's time to test the JAT501 amplifier project on the Quantasylum audio analyzer. So, here I have the original prototype. The reason I'm using this, it has a socket here that I can plug in different Miller compensation capacitors. I'm kind of curious of how the performance will change with that. So I'll run a few tests and I will graph the results and um, I won't show everything here on the video. I mean I'll show the results but I won't go through it all because it'll be kind of long and tedious and boring. So what I have here is like I said the amplifier is Connected to the power supply, plus minus 32 volts. I can't run it at its maximum due to my limitations with the power supply, but eh, it's good enough. Connected to the non-inductive re resistor load bank, and tested 4 and 8 ohms. Got on a heat sink, and some capacitors there, and of course the Quantasylum. Next, I need to baseline the Quantasylum. So what I do is connect its outputs directly to its inputs, nothing in between. So it's just a loop cable right from its output to its inputs and you know, run some tests to see how low the distortion I can get out of it. So here's the figures. So at 20 hertz, I got 0.0003%. 1 kilohertz, I got 0 0.00018. Same with 20 kilohertz. That's at a sampling rate of 192K. If I can use a lower sampling rate, like 48, I can get even smaller values. However, I can't measure the higher, the upper register of the amplifier with only 48. I need to have it at 192. And, you know, that's obviously pretty good. So the signal level is at 0 dB, which is just their reference level for their outputs. If I set it a little higher or a little lower, these would go up. So it seems like these would be the best I can get out of it. So when I started testing, I ran into a problem. And that is the distortion was a little higher than expected. I was set up at around 1 watt, 8 ohms, 1 kilohertz, kind of, you know, just a starting measurement. And the distortion level was 0 0.015. Well, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it was higher than what I was getting when I measured it before, years ago, on the computer using its sound card. I was getting 0.005%. So why was I so much higher, about three times higher? Well, I monkeyed around a bit and found out um, opening the ground loop really corrected that problem. So the thing is, you have your quant asylum with all of its grounds. You're sending your signal out, it's connected to the ground, then the output, and it comes back with its ground into its input. So you have really a big loop of ground so what I ended up doing is breaking the ground, so I'm just connected to the center pin of that cable here. I'm not connecting the output side ground. Though I am still shielded up, well, at least to this point. It's low impedance on the output, so I'm not too worried about that. But, yeah, opening that ground, I started getting very good uh, distortion measurements, so... Let's go to the computer and have a look. Okay, so this is what I'm getting. So I'm set around 1 watt, which I would consider a lower power measurement, normal listening type situation. 1 kilohertz signal, 8 ohm load, uh, 0 0.0018 something. So yeah, it's, I'm pretty happy with that. Not too bad. At 20 hertz, it seems like it's higher, but I have to increase the FFT sampling here. 
I'm gonna crank it up to 256. I don't know what's going on. See, this was about a watt. Now it's 190 milliwatts. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on, but see the distortion drops. Increase it. At lower frequencies, you need more data. It takes it a while before it will show. Unless it stopped on me again. Oh, there it is. Let it average out for a bit here. You can see the numbers dropping. I'm not sure why this says this. I mean, the response is flat. Should, should be pretty flat. I'm using this. I get a smaller rating. I think it's something with the software is not right. But yeah, there's our... I'd say this is a more accurate reading here, 0 0.0027. Okay, at 20 kilohertz, you can see the distortion has increased. It's 0 0.017. That's normal for an amplifier to have higher distortion at, at the highest audio frequency because of loop gain. There's less loop gain for negative feedback to do its job. So, you end up with a little bit higher distortion. Now, a lot of amplifier manufacturers will put a weighting to, you know, make their equipment look better. It's arguable because, you know, the human ear doesn't have a flat response. So, you know, a lot of them will use A weighting. So, if I turn on A weighting, you can see that the distortion gets low again and you know you could even use C weighting and it still it's gonna be pretty low see how it kind of tapers off there in A weighting you get this kind of bulging shape it's kind of opposite the contour of your ear the sensitivity of human hearing kind of goes like this okay here is the frequency response and right here is the 20 Hertz line and right here is the 20 kilohertz line so the amplifier is extremely flat maybe 0.1 down at 20 Hertz uh, 0.1 DB <laughs> There's no way you can tell that difference. You can increase the capacitor, the input capacitor, from 2.2 microfarads to 3.3 or 4.7 if you have to have that even flatter. But I don't would understand why, because you know that's very very low frequency for any speaker. Okay, at this point, I'm going to stop running the camera and, and running my mouth and I'll take measurements and graph it and uh, come back with the results. Okay, let's take a look at some of my findings. This is a 1 watt 8 ohm load test versus frequency. You can see the red line is with the 47 picofarad Miller cap the blue is the 100, which I originally specified. So, yeah, it do, does a lot better with the 47 at the higher frequencies. See, we're crossing the 0.01 line at, I don't know, 12, 12 13 kilohertz. And 6.5 with the 100 picofarad Miller cap. So yeah, it's much better. But in the important frequency ranges, it's uh, well below 0 0.01. This is distortion versus power. Uh, the blue line is your 8 ohm. The red line is the 4 ohm. And we got to... Uh, what is that? Two, three, four, what, 48 
47 watts. This knee here is when it starts hitting clipping. But clipping is probably not going to be audible until you get above 1% or so. And that's at around 55 watts, 8 ohm, 4 ohms. You can see, I don't know why it dipped below the 8 ohm uh, distortion, but well, that's what it measured. Of course, 4 ohm requires double the current from the amplifier, and it's going to have higher distortion. But, you know, it's not bad. It's still below 0 0.01. It's a very good performance. Uh, we start clipping at, mm, what would that be, around 84 watts, and it goes above 1% at 100 watts. So wherever you want to uh, consider your clipping point. I did some measurements, tighter measurements, I guess you could say, uh, by carefully adjusting the output of the Quantasylum. Considering the distortion at clipping, or I should say 0.5% uh, being the maximum point before clipping. If I use that at 8 ohms, it was 52 watts. Uh, 4 ohms was 98 watts. Again, the amplifier is running at plus minus 32 volts. It's really designed to run at plus minus 35. You can get, you know, somewhat higher power with that, but I don't have that capability on my bench. Intermodulation distortion, ignore the uh, this here. There's probably a way to set it up, but I'm just looking at the graph here. So it's around a little under 4 watts. And I had an 18 to 19 kilohertz signal going there. The highest peak is around 55 kilohertz, minus 70 dB. So, you know, it's not really going to be an issue. Uh, most important to me is the junk reflected down into the audible, or I should say the audio range. If I could speak. Um, I have something here down 90, minus 97 or so. Um, and this stuff is well below minus 100, so absolutely... Nothing to be concerned about there. I was curious of the performance of the amplifier at low voltage, plus or minus 12 volts, just in case you would want to run it on battery power, make something portable. Of course, at such low voltages, supply voltages, you're not going to get a lot of power. But I was still happy to see that distortion is very low still. And... Uh, we're hitting about six and a half watts. If you consider one percent your clipping point, it's six and a half. And technically, the knee is where it's actually starting to clip, but the audibility of it, I would say, would be more around this area. And again, plus minus twelve volts. This time with a four ohm load. Starting to clip around 8.4-ish and going above out here, you know, 10 point something, 10.2, 10.3 watts. Again, distortion is very low in the, uh, the linear region here. Okay, I think that's enough for now. You know, I can test and test until I'm blue in the face. Measure bait, as they call it. But I think we've got enough idea here. I think the amp's performing pretty well. If you go back six years to 2018, when I first kicked off this project in the summer of 2018, I said that I wanted to create an amp that wasn't overcomplicated. And I didn't want it to be too simple, but not one of these overcomplicated ones that have like 20 transistors in the input stage. I was going for a reasonable distortion. I wasn't going for that 0 .0000 stuff. To me, it doesn't make any sense. It's just not audible. Overcomplicates the design, and you have to worry about you know stability of 
individual stages even more, and so on and so forth. So I think the amp met its goals pretty well. So I'm happy with that, but I'm really happy with this thing. You know, playing with this measurement, I learned some more about this. Learned more about setting up the test. You know, breaking that ground loop really helped. Uh, just the things you can do with this. You know, it just goes on and on. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.